Hello, I'm Zenafir, and welcome to another video on the TechQuest. I mostly review older PC components to see how they do in the modern day, but today I'm going to be looking at something that is actually quite new. I'm going to be taking a look at Intel's recently released Arc B570 graphics card, and running it through its paces in modern games. Let's get started. The Intel Arc B570 is a second generation Intel Arc card, released in January 2025. For its asking price of around £220, the B570 is one of the cheapest new performance segment cards you can buy, and it's well featured for that money too. Based on exactly the same BMG G21 chip as the Intel Arc B580, a GPU I also purchased at the end of last year, the B570 has seen some minor changes to bring it in at a cheaper price point than the Arc B580. For a start, it loses two XE cores for a total of 18. It has slightly fewer shading units and runs on an odd 10 gigabytes of VRAM with an unusual 160-bit memory bus. What you're ultimately getting is around a 10% reduction in performance for a similar reduction in price. Considering that the Arc B580 can be found for around £250 or so new, how does this card fare at £220? Today's test system is as follows, an Intel Core i5-14400F, 32GB of DDR4-3200MHz RAM, a finely upgraded the memory in that PC, and it's on a Gigabyte H610M board on Windows 11. It's a fairly modest setup, but one that is new enough to avoid any driver overheads. More on that later, and falls in line with what you'd expect to see in a more price-friendly setup. As with all Intel Arc card requirements, rebar support has also been enabled in the BIOS. Intel's Arc software has no native video capture like its competitors, an utterly bizarre decision in light of Battle Mage's outstanding creativity performance, so I've hooked up a capture card for gameplay here. I was planning on using my Elgato Game Capture Neo for video capture, but the creaky old laptop I use for whenever I need to record without using a main PC doesn't have a USB 3.2 port, so we're kind of stuck using an old Elgato Game Capture HD for the time being. Intel's decision to not include video capture software seems even more incredible when you consider the fact that they actually had this support included in the Arc A series and removed the feature with the launch of Battle Mage. It must surely have taken more effort to remove it than keep it in, even if they just provided it as is. But anyway, I digress. What this does mean though, is that you're seeing exactly what the card is capable of. The version I bought is a Sparkle Guardian card, and I paid about £220 excluding postage. The card itself is aesthetically pleasing, and it's powered by a single 8-pin connector. It's smaller than the Arc B580, but it kind of looks exactly the same in every other regard. As of the time of this video being produced, you can now pick up the B570 for £199.99 and the Arc B580 for £239.99 right now from Overclockers UK, a company I have used for years and highly recommend, but again, more on that pricing later. We've got a lot to cover today, so without further delay, let's get to it. First up is Doom the Dark Ages. At 1080p using the game's medium preset and Intel's XESS upscaling, the Dark Ages fell just short of a 60fps experience here, which was actually a bit of a surprise. I did expect it to do a little better than it did here, if I'm honest. The funny thing is, I saw a near identical performance at both the medium and high preset in Doom, with very little in between them, so maybe this is something that can be improved in the future at the driver level. Average was 57.9 FPS, with a 1% coming in at a decent 42.2, and a 0.1% reaching 34.1. So although it didn't quite hit 60 FPS here, it did remain consistent throughout my playtime on the Arc B570. Red Dead Redemption 2, a game that has had some issues on Intel Arc cards, ran pretty great on the B570. A 1080p in using the medium preset, but with textures set to ultra, the B570 managed an excellent average frame rate of 114 on the dot. Although, there is something going off with GPU utilisation in towns. Once I hit Valentine or any other town, GPU utilisation just dropped from 99 to 60%. But this caused no playability problems, as the frame rate still remained high. So, perhaps another driver issue is occurring. Something you'll be hearing me saying more in this review. Percentile figures were excellent overall too. 1% at 70.6 and 0.1% at 50.7. So, you're going to have a pretty good experience here. Cyberpunk 2077 is next. At 1080p, using the high preset with ray tracing on and XESS upscaling enabled, the Arc B570 put in a solid performance here. It's not just the average that was decent either, the percentile figures were also excellent, so this is a highly optimised game for the B570. And it's moments like this that you see the value proposition of Intel's Arc cards when they get it right. There are very few GPUs in this price segment new that will perform this well, and this is where Arc really comes into its own. Cyberpunk was very smooth to play, right the way through my playtime. Average was 77.5, with the percentile figures also being excellent at 60.9 and 51.4 for the 1% and 0.1% lows respectively. 
The Witcher 3 is another game where we didn't quite see 60 FPS, but it got very close. A 1080p high with a ray tracing on and once again using XCSS, the ARC B570 managed an average of 58.2 FPS and overall it was more than playable at these settings. If that 60 FPS matters to you, dropping a couple of settings down to medium will push you over that mark quite easily and the percentile figures were okay too. 1% at 48.1 with 0.1 coming in at 16.5 FPS. The Last of Us Part 1 saw the return of some performance oddities. At 1080p and using the game's high preset with FSR set to quality, The Last of Us started off really well and it was looking quite promising, but then we hit the warehouse section. Forms at this point pretty much just halved, with GPU utilisation once again tanking for no obvious reason. On one hand it remained more than playable, even around the 45 FPS mark, but we started off with performance well into the 80s, so there's something going off with The Last of Us on the B570. Optimization isn't quite where it needs to be from one of the sides. We started off high, so over time the frame rate started evening out at the end of my 20 minutes or so, but the average here was 73.2, with solid percentile figures to go with it at 40.5 and 37.1 for the 1 and 0.1% respectively. But keep in mind that there are some performance oddities going on here. Dying Light 2 on the other hand ran excellent. At 1080p and using the game's high preset, I also enabled Intel XESS to quality and the B570 delivered some outstanding results here. The frame rate was high and stayed high throughout, with only a single blip in gameplay during my playtime with it. Average was a fantastic 105.7 FPS, with the 1% at a still good 74 FPS, and the 0.1 at 17.4 FPS. With the exception of a single stutter as I entered the game, Dying Light 2 ran amazing on the ARC B570. Space Marine 2 is up now, a very demanding title. I've also played plenty of this using an ARC B580, so I had a pretty good idea of what to expect going in with the B570. At 1080p high, with FSR on and set to performance at 60 FPS, this will dynamically alter the resolution to keep the frame rate up during taxing moments, and I deliberately picked a part of a level that I knew would hammer the B570. Amazingly, the B570 didn't blink here at all, with excellent performance right the way throughout my playtime here, and I really did try and make the card stumble here at fair settings. Average was 67 on the dot, with a 1% low at 41.7 FPS. The 0.1% came in at 8.5 FPS, which is a little on the low side, but honestly, I don't recall the game missing a beat at all, so I'm thinking that maybe this occurred during a mid-level transition as I was playing this one for quite a while. Either way, it runs great on the ARC B570, and you're not going to be disappointed by the performance here. GTA 5 Enhanced is next. I released a longer duration video of this the other day, but I know if I don't include it here in the reviews, you guys will rightly clown me in the comments, so here it is. At 1080p and using the very high preset with the ray tracing on, the B570 delivered an excellent experience overall. Average was 118.3, with a 1% coming in at 77.4 FPS and 0.1% at 58.5. So GTA 5 Enhanced is a consistent, solid performer on the B570. If you want to see more GTA, feel free to check out the video I posted recently. I'll leave a link at the end of the video for you. The Division 2 now. At 1080p and using the high preset, the ARC B570 delivered an outstanding result here. I've tested the Division 2 on a lot of hardware over time, as well as put thousands of hours into the game on PC as well. So what I say next, I don't say lightly. The Intel Arc B570 delivers some of the most reliable performance I think I have ever played on the PC. I've been quick so far to point out where something isn't quite right, and I should also be as quick to point out when something is right too. And the Arc B570 delivers incredible, consistent performance that I've personally only seen on more expensive cards. Average was 121.8 FPS, with percentile figures also being outstanding, 1% at 78.8 and 0.1% at 29.4. Consistency is the name of the game, and the B570 doesn't let you down in the Division 2. And if only that had followed into Dead Space. I have touched on this in previous reviews elsewhere, but Dead Space on the PC isn't a very good performer. The game is plagued by various degrees of stuttering on pretty much every machine I've ever played it on, and even causes stuttering on my own RTX 2080 Ti rig, and that is a card that is certainly no slouch. And the same is true again on the ARC B570. At 1080p, and using the medium settings with FSR set to quality, Dead Space, when it wasn't stuttering, managed a good pace on the B570, with an average of 58.9 FPS. Percentile figures were absolutely awful here with both percentile figures being just 0.3. This can't be blamed on the ARC B570 though, so I'm not going to hold Dead Space's so-so performance here against the card on this one. An older title, Dying Light now. At 1080p with all graphical options maxed out, the B570 managed impressive numbers on an older title. Performance in older games isn't always perfect, and certainly something that does need some work, but 2015's Dying Light ran absolutely great, with an average of 166.9 FPS, 
and solid percent are lows coming in at 68 and 30.4 fps for the 1% and 0.1% figures respectively. Going slightly older now, Borderlands 2 also ran pretty well at 1080p with all the settings set to their highest. 2012's Borderlands 2 also had no issue on the B570 with solid performance all around and good percentile lows too. So you're in for a really smooth session here. Average was 194.2 with 1% coming in at 50.1 FPS and the 0.1% still being an excellent 37.9 FPS. Personal favourite are mine Frostpunk now. At 1080p and using a very high preset complete with a mystery 60 FPS cap again. Honestly, I have no idea where this was being capped because I keep on checking all the options and there was nothing. But the B570 manages this without issue. I won't spend too much time here on account of that magical cap. More than playable. Our penultimate game today, and one quickly becoming another favourite of mine, Roadcraft. At 1080p and using the high preset with FSR enabled, the arc performed admirably here, even if it was just ever so slightly short of the 60fps target I always try to aim for. It remained a mostly smooth experience, with a very occasional stutter that I believe is actually game related and something outside of the B570's control. I've had similar issues on my RTX 2080 Ti, so this looks like a slight game issue rather than a driver issue, but it was plenty playable enough fixing the universe one road at a time, and I quite enjoyed my time on it. Average was a still solid 55.3 FPS, with decent enough 1% lows of 38.2, 0.1% was just 5.1 FPS, but keep in mind I don't think this is directly attributed to the ARC B570. And finally, Horizon Forbidden West. At 1080p with a mixture of medium and high settings, I also enabled XESS here with a target of 60 FPS to keep the frame rate up, even at the cost of resolution. What we got here was a great looking, great performing game that is clearly very well optimised overall. It was fantastic and reflected in the superb figures overall. I really like Forbidden West and I think that it's easily one of the best looking games available right now and it performs very well on almost anything too. Average here was 80.2 with percentile figures also being really good. 1% at 59.2 with 0.1% at 41.4 FPS. Perfect. And that's a wrap. I'm a week into the ARC B570. I'm not going to talk about how I could have saved nearly 30 quid had I waited for a few more days, because I'm obviously not dwelling on that at all. Of course I'm not. Anyway, the B570. I'm absolutely torn on this one. I like the ARC B570. It's a decent budget card and an almost excellent price point, but it's not without its issues, and there are issues that you won't really find anywhere else. For a start, the ARC B series are budget cards. The people most likely to buy them are people on a strict budget, and they're usually using an older CPU. This is a problem on ARC for a number of reasons. First, your PC must support resizable bar or rebar in your BIOS settings. Without this, these cards are as good as useless to you because performance of that rebar is awful. If you're still rocking an i7-2600, this is definitely not the card for you. Speaking of older CPUs, there's something going off with ARC cards and older processors, and by older we're talking about the Ryzen 5600 which actually isn't that old. Smarter people than me have covered this elsewhere in great detail, so I'll try and keep this short. ARC cards have some kind of driver overhead on older processors that decrease performance. To get the absolute best out of Battle Mage, you'll need a newish modern processor, and this is often odd with the target market of these sub £250 GPUs. And although Intel have stated that they are looking into this, it remains to be seen if they can actually do anything about it. And then there's a drivers. Now credit where credit is due, Intel have been working on drivers at a really impressive pace. They're serious about becoming player 3 in the discrete GPU domain, but they're not always quite there in terms of performance. So you should take that into consideration too. Intel are new to this market, and they are playing catch up, but they really are trying to catch up. And finally, there's a price. Since starting this video, the ARC B570 has gone down in price in some retailers to less than the £200 mark, and that is absolutely where this card should be. At RRP, it's far too close to the fantastic ARC B580, currently at £239.99 as well, and my recommendation to you would be to try and squeeze that little extra money in for the ARC B580. The ARC B570 is a little easier to recommend at sub £200, but it's still far too close to its superior bigger brother. If you're on a shoestring budget, the ARC B570 will play your games at 1080p quite easily when the driver support is there. If you can stretch just a little more, then the B580 is a far better choice and ultimately the card I would recommend to you with the above reservations. I found myself completely torn on this though. Now, normally I don't really like to add my personal opinions into my video, but just this once I'm going to make an exception here. Let's be honest, we've been living through a period where the only real game in town has been Nvidia. It's been this way for years, and our graphics cards are more expensive to the point where we are now at thousands of pounds for a top-end GPU. Just a decade ago, with competition, a top-end GPU would have cost you, what, 
a quarter of that. But then the competition just stopped and we've been paying the ever steeper price for that since. In that regard, Intel's B-series couldn't have come at a more perfect time, but it's not a perfect product. Competition keeps competitors honest. Now more than ever, we need competition in the GPU space. Otherwise, we're going to be paying thousands of pounds for GPUs forever. Intel's Arc B-series has released with much success, and I'm genuinely glad it has done so, despite its imperfections. If Intel can keep up the interest, and pace, then there's a real chance of change in an otherwise stagnant, expensive market. While their CPU business has seen better times, Intel are really trying with the discrete GPU market. I consider myself an analytical guy in general, and I try to keep that in mind in my conclusions. If you're looking for a card around the £250 mark, it's hard for most people to pass the GeForce RTX 4060 by, even though the Arc B580 performs better at 1440p and features more VRAM. But if you're looking for a sub £200 card and the Arc B570 is under that price, then maybe you should give Intel a shot. And honestly, that's how I personally feel about the Intel Arc series in general. Putting aside 0.2% performance differences versus that other card, we've been complaining about hyperinflated GPU prices and stingy VRAM allocations for years. We all have. But now a new challenger has appeared, and it's time for us to put our money where our mouth is. We can't complain that we didn't have a choice when a choice presented itself and we did nothing. When everything is just right, Intel's art cards are a phenomenal purchase at their price point for the performance they offer versus the competition. The problem for now is that the performance isn't always there yet. Intel, I'm rooting for you. I've been Zonoff here, and thank you for watching the Arc B570 on the Tech Quest. Until next time, bye bye.